good to see you. <laughs> I, uh, if it was a perfect world and everything went to plan, we wouldn't be having this chat because you'd be on a plane on your way to Leon with Cam, wouldn't you? Eating some croissants, <laughs> it would have been good. Yeah. yeah. Tell us what happened because everything was going good. So, this would be the sixth pull out of the year. Um, yeah, I really thought this one was, <laughs> this one was gonna happen. Uh, but yeah, now my opponent basically pulled out and he wanted a easier fight. So he's still fighting next week. He's been matched up with someone else. And yeah, um, I miss out on going to France, which I'm pretty devastated about. <laughs> well, that's crazy if he's still fighting. Is that yeah, I think it's just, it's just a weak heart. Like, um, like when I fight, I want to fight the best. And that's why I can't wait to get into the UFC because the best fighters are there and there's no picking and choosing. So I'm getting pretty sick of um, people in Australia, New Zealand picking fights, you know, easy fights. And we try to go to, to Europe and the same shit happens. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been a long road because um, yeah. we had a good chat the other day about, you know, before you come to CKB and uh, th that's real interesting. Just, just tell everybody about your early sporting life and uh, or lack of sporting life. Yeah, or yeah. So I um, started playing rugby at 18 and um, I was pretty good, didn't really train hard. Um, wanted to play in the NRC, ended up, um, yeah, getting sick. Had like tumours in my hand, um, basically had to get surgery done, like plastic surgery, and that put me out for like a solid year. And um, yeah, just sort of fell off and went down the wrong path maybe a little bit. A bit of mental health as well, like, um, you know, I was, I was like, I lost both my jobs and everything. And yeah, I sort of started fighting at 23. It, but the surgery wasn't just gonna get a little... No, nah, I, I was gonna lose my fingers because um, the, the tumours were actually inside the bone in the joints. And I had um, Randall uh, Sash, he's one of the best plastic surgeons in Australia. I was actually his last job, so he wanted to do a really good job. And but I remember going in for surgery, like, he was like, I'm sorry if, if we can't keep your fingers. And I just fucking started crying. Uh, it, was, it was pretty shit. Like it, was like, it was like a movie, you know, like a dingy hospital, pushed me through the doors, like the theatre. And then when I woke up, my, my fingers were like in the cast and stuff. I looked down and I just thought I lost my fingers. <laughs> I was like fucking on anesthesia. I was like crying and shit. It was, it was an ordeal. And what were you going to be left with? Yeah. <laughs> Stick them up. <laughs> yeah, so I got a big scar down here and over there. But hey, I get to punch people in the face now, so I'm blessed. <laughs> yeah, so, so I recovered from that. Um, I was doing security and I was also a sprinkler fitter. So I did like all fire systems. And then, um, yeah, I lost, lost my apprenticeship, lost my security license as well. And I was out of work for about a year and a bit. And I was just like, I was in a mental hole, like depressed. And um, I was always got told I was too, too, um, too small or too old to start fighting ever since I was like 16. And I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna, gonna do it. So I walked into a gym, started training, and uh, I had a fight within like a couple of months of training. And I thought I was the man. Went to, went to Melbourne and I fought um, this guy named Fully. Of, of, yeah, and he was like a Samoan, a Samoan guy. I thought it was an amateur fight. I didn't know it was a professional fight. So they, they announced him, he's had like 15 pro fights. <laughs> and they called me up. And then I'm like, like, what the fuck, pro debut? Oh, I, I was like, nah, fuck it, I'm, I'm a man. And I went in there, <laughs> gassed out within like two minutes. Just, I knocked him down three times and um, just swinging like wild. And he was tough, he was tough. And I got him out there like the last 10 seconds. I was like, fuck this, not doing this shit again. <laughs> that was my first experience. And um, yeah, I like, came back to the gym. I was like, nah, I gotta train and uh, yeah. Fell in love with it after that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, um, but you, you, one of your jobs was a security job looking after a family and you... you yep. So I've done heaps of jobs. Um, that's me, eh? 
Hang on. <laughs> Two seconds. <laughs> Wake up. Um, sorry. Hey, take it, take it. Cause it's nah, 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 it's all good. It's just my alarm to eat. Forget to eat sometimes. All good. Yeah, so I've I've done heaps of do, uh, heaps of jobs, different trades, worked on fishing boats as well, done lots of security. But before I was um, planning to move to New Zealand, I got a bodyguarding job for a rich family. So like there'll be seven seven of us working one shift, and um, we just looked after this family, and it was wild. Like uh, yeah, I can't really talk about too much, but yeah, it was it was pretty intense. Um, 12 hour shifts and it was just like mayhem. Like, I can't even, yeah. So, yeah, I can't yeah, you could You could have had that job for life though. Yeah, it was good money as well. It was like, um, when I first started, it was like $75 an hour. Went up to 100 real quick. And um, 12 hour shifts, but this wasn't for me. Like, I want to fight. You can offer me all the money in the world, but like, I've got to do this. So, yeah. And then of course, COVID struck. Yeah, COVID. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> so I was actually, um, yeah, just before COVID hit, I signed with uh, Dan Hooker. He had like a management uh, company. And I was in talks with him moving over and staying at his gym and, and living there. And COVID hit, a couple of months went past. He called me up and said, bro, like, um, I'm going to close down the, the company. You're more than welcome to come train. Um, if you need a place to stay, I'll help you. Etc., and that was sort of my way into city kickboxing through Dan. Um, and then, yeah, a couple of years goes past, and I fought on King of the Ring, lost that, <laughs> didn't train for that. Um, and then I came in the next day, I sparred with Izzy, and I met Eugene properly. And um, Izzy, like, I was sparring with him, he took me down, he had me, he had, he had me up against the wall over there, he was like punching me. And he's like, um, bro, I want you to come train with us, um, be a sparring partner, and um, like, I'll, I'll help you out. And I said, nah, like, I'll like, appreciate it, but I'll, I'll make my own way. So after a couple of months, I packed my bags and came here. So I missed the first prayer of fight, but I was there for the second one. So yeah, that was a good experience. What's a ride been like? Is it worth giving up the hundred dollars an hour job? Oh yeah, like who shove that money up your ass? <laughs> the memories I made, in, in, I've been here almost a year now. The memories I made last a lifetime, and even though I haven't fought yet, I know I've improved a lot. I've know I've learnt a lot. Met so many great people. Um, this gym's really changed my life. Um, I'm glad I didn't wait another year because it probably would have been too late. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, the years go quick. Uh, I could have come here probably four years ago, but I just didn't take the jump then. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to leave the family and stuff, you know? Um, and then, like, you got to think about how you're going to come here. And I'm fortunate enough to have some amazing sponsors that sort of, because of them, I could actually move here. I didn't have to worry about money. So, you know, I can train and, yeah. Without them, I wouldn't be here. So thank you to all my sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> and just tell us, run through why, um, some of the fights that you've had and how close you've got before they've been pulled out from under your feet. Yeah, so uh, I was supposed to fight the two days before UFC 293 in Sydney. Did the full camp. I was pretty beat up. Um, I got, had staff like three or four times really bad. Pushed through. Um, my original opponent, Change, he pulled out, didn't want to fight. Um, that was probably about three weeks out. And then we got a Korean guy um, to replace him. So I was like, oh yeah, sweet, all good. Like the biggest fight, fight weekend of the year, especially for local MMA, we couldn't get one Australian or one Kiwi fighter. It's a joke, you know what I mean? Even the champions like turned it down. So it's just, yeah. Um, and then lead like, I think it was like four days before the fight was supposed to happen, the guy got it injured. And then they tried to find another replacement, hit up everyone else again, and yeah, no one wanted to take it. So like, I think I just started cutting weight 
And I think I was just, like, I think it was the day before the weigh-ins and Eugene pulled me aside with the coaches and told me the great news. <laughs> but yeah, um, it is what it is. Like I've, like since day one this has happened, I've had over 20 pullouts now. Um, that's why I went to kickboxing because you, you, I could get fights easier. But even then, it's like the same shit. Um, yeah. It's not like the good old days, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've been lying. Men out. fight and yeah, yeah, they got balls, so. Now, what is it, the, the, how's your reputation gotten around so much without appearing? I don't even know, like, I would want to fight me. I think I'm shit. <laughs> Fuck, I've only had one MMA fight, like, what are these, what, what do they want? Like, I want to know, you know? Um, I don't know, maybe because I fought uh, Dave, like my second fight, I did, did well, I didn't win, but I did well. And I fought some other guys with like 50 fights, 100 fights, and I don't know, just um, I think my aggression, I go in there and I'm not letting the judges rob me, like I'm gonna knock them out. Like I'm gonna knock out my opponent, whether it's first round, second round. Normally happens in the first round, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I think people just, just yeah, I don't know. Uh, if they're all trying to keep their record padded and yeah. they're trying there. Yeah, but that's the thing, like, you, what happens, you, you start dodging people and you get to UFC, what, are you going to try to dodge people then? Like, yeah. Um, that's why I can't wait to get to the UFC because you get your three fights a year minimum, minimum, hopefully more if you can, and you, like, work your way up, you fight the best. That's, that's the goal, is to be the best, you know, so... Yeah. What's the best thing that's happened to you as far as um, health-wise? Um, you talked a little bit about mental health and, yep. and that. What, what's, what's been the problem in the past and is it yep. fixed? Um, fuck, you've got to be mentally strong to be here, eh? <laughs> you can't so brutal. <laughs> um, no, nah, look, my first couple of months here was pretty rough. Um, yeah. Different world, like no family, no friends. Everyone's riding you. You know, you're trying to be nice and shit, but like, you know, they're testing you. And uh, <laughs> come on, yeah. tell the story. Nah, nah, there's, there's <laughs> fucking too many. <laughs> but nah, like I've I've learned a lot being here. I feel like I've um, everything I went through when I was younger sort of built me for this. Um, and yeah, like the workload itself, like I've, I've been here a year. I still don't think I've done a full week of training. Like, fuck, just, um, yeah, it's, the training's next level. So I'm still trying to, like every day I'm trying to get better. Um, yeah, whether it's like sickness, injuries, staff, whatever it is, like something's always, always there. So that's something I'm learning to deal with. Um, yeah, like back home. I'll be training a couple of days a week, never really got injured, never got sick, you know. Um, a fight comes up, I'll just fight here, like I'm doing camps and stuff, um, which I've never done before. So yeah, it's intense, it's good. And then in helping everyone out, like you get injured sometimes just helping other pe people do their spiders and their camps. So um, Izzy, <laughs> Izzy did my cartilage for the Pereira fight. He fucking popped my cartilage, you know, so yeah, he's, yeah, next level power. <laughs> it, it, it's um, gives you real insight of how dedicated you have to be to get to. Yeah, and I was like all the boys here, like and even like um, people that are not in the UFC, the local guys. You got to respect what, what what they do. Like um, I never really seen that before. The dedication and everything that goes into it. You just see people fight. You don't see the training and like oh, we, we we train hard back home. But it's, yeah, yeah, it's different here, for sure. Um, Tell us a little bit about um, the setup here with uh, Doug and, and Eugene and yeah. how, uh, how you've seen it even grow, even the short time that you've been, it's still growing. Yeah, so, um, like, fuck. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to, to be a part of the team. Um, so a lot of a lot of gyms like um, it's sort of like businesses, you know. This isn't a business. Like this is more like a family thing, 
and to be a part of it's a blessing. Um, like Eugene and Doug do so much for me. Um, like I was sleeping in my car and then they gave me a place to stay for free. And then, um, yeah, just like, just the little things. Like I, I can't even tell you half of them because they're, they're personal. Like I don't need a, like, like to tell them. But they like people, like everyone here helps each other out and, and the skill development that I learn like if you just walk in the gym and then, and then you like look at a class, you're like, oh yeah, whatever. It's but it's like the finer details that um, you pick up on, and it takes it's a process. It takes weeks and weeks and months to sort of get used to it. I'm still learning the system, um, so yeah, like everything. It's, yeah. Dougie showing you any of his secret fishing spots? Yeah, <laughs> he, he showed me one yesterday. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> shark almost got me. <laughs> Oh, I was diving and he was in the kayak and um, there was fish everywhere. I was looking for a kingfish and um, had a few kinner, like crushed them up and was like burly everywhere. And I see this big grey thing go past me. I look and it's a fucking bronze whale, like a 10 footer. And it comes in and I fucking poke it away. And normally they, they, like, they, they go, but then it came back in again. I'm like, oh shit. So I poked it again. I start swimming back. I'm like, Doug, shark, shark. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> my shark! You know, I fucking poke it one more time and I'm getting a bit nervous now because it's like getting aggressive. And then it pissed off and that was it. Got my crayfish and then I left. <laughs> <laughs> was Dougie already back at shore by the end? Yeah, he came <laughs> over at the end. He's like, what did you say? I'm like, fucking shark, bro. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah. Fishing here is crazy. Love it. Um, anything lined up or anything remotely possible before Christmas? Yeah, so December, um, eternal, don't know what date it is, but end of the year, so just got to get one in for the year, you know, just one. <laughs> I'll pray. Well, we'll pray with you, mate, yeah. and hope it happens, eh? <laughs> <We'll> stay positive. <laughs> uh, appreciate it, Tony. Uh, beauty, man. Beauty. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> uh, yeah. I didn't know about the shark. Um, yeah. yeah, it was um, fuck, it was big. It was because because when I got my flippers on, I'm about I'm like six five. Flippers are probably three foot. It was a lot longer than me. It's about ten foot, um, and just thick, just thick, and fuck, it was just yeah, it just kept coming in and going out. Because normally they they just disappear once you poke them. But yeah, this one was like aggressive. What say that come up from behind? Fuck, it just, it literally wrapped around me. So it would have come from behind. And cause I was in there for an hour, I was diving, looking in holes and there was fish everywhere. I shot a couple of fish, gutted them, put them in the water and you just get comfortable. So you stop looking around like this and you start like focusing on the bottom. And you dive down and then you grab some um, weeds and you just saw a rock and you just wait there. And normally, like, normally you see like kingfish like go past on top. And I was breathing up, so I was floating for a couple of minutes. I was breathing up, and then it just fucking came around me, and just yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. How far away was Dougie? Oh, probably about 100 meters, 200 meters. Oh, yeah. And we were, we were like pretty far out from the from the heads, so yeah, crazy. Yeah, that's oh, that's my luck, you know. I would get fucking. <laughs> Bit on the leg. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah uh, you, the fight would have been on, yeah. and then yeah, you wouldn't have been able to go. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> Could be smarter. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey. Appreciate you. Fantastic, mate. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, what do you got on the rest of the day? Oh, we're waiting on the last class for the relentless guys. Yeah, nice. Are they sparring at 4.15 or? Uh, yeah, they'll be for the. MMA sparring. Yeah.